Hi, my name is Shelly Staples. I'm a PI on the Crow Project and a professor at the University of Arizona. And today I'm here to introduce you to our wiki for Chibata. And Chibata stands for Corpus in a Box, Automated Tools, Tutorials, and Advising. Okay, so here's our Chibata Wiki, and the purpose of this web page, um, the Chibata Wiki, is to walk you through the different stages of building a corpus from converting different document types, like Word documents and PDF files, to text files, to adding metadata in the form of headers to each text file. And we have various links out from our Wiki to vid video tutorials and scripts. Um, so I'm going to focus on the wiki part, um, starting with the contents here. So this is our overview, and you can see all the different steps um, that we have built out for building a corpus. Navigate either from this homepage, or we also have all the steps over here um, on the right in the navigation pane. And you can ignore um, these tabs at the top of the page. Uh, they allow you to interact with more advanced functions within GitHub, um, but if you're not familiar with GitHub, don't worry about that. You can just interact uh, with our wiki. So starting again here on the homepage, um, you can see the contents. We've put them in the order we think is most helpful for getting people started with corpus building. Um, but some of the steps we outline here won't be relevant for all users. Um, for example, if you don't plan to share your corpus with others, you won't need to worry about uh, step nine, de-identifying your data. Um, in addition, some steps do require more computational skills than others. Um, for example, our two um, tools that we've developed, um, so uh, this automatic processing with our Corpus Text Processor um, and the automatic, sorry, the manual de-identification tool. Um, those uh, should be fairly easy to use without any background in um, pro using programming scripts. Uh, on the other hand, um, for the automatic de-identification script um, and also um, things like uh, headers and file names, um, you'll need to be able to run Python scripts. Um, and for the headers and file names in particular, you probably will need to be able to manipulate um, programming scripts. So um, for that, you may be able to um, bring in someone who can help you with those scripts if you don't have that capability yourself. Uh, the good news is if you're just planning to use a corpus offline, so not putting it on the web, um, for your own purposes, you can use our toolkit without any programming skills and you can get it to a point, get your corpus to a point where then you can use it with commonly used analytical tools like AntConc, Lengthbox, or Sketch Engine. So we're going to walk through the contents um, and I'm going to show you all the possible steps you might want to take in your corpus building. So the first step here, number one, is actually um, whether you need a corpus or not. So um, in, this, uh, in this step, uh, we have a video and we have the, the wiki content. Um, if you're interested in seeing the video, it's down here at the bottom. And um, here is where Dr. Randy Ruppin introduces you to some of the corpora and provides some guidelines for thinking about whether and how to build a corpus. Um, we also have some external reading sources here uh, for thinking about whether and how to build a corpus. Um, and um, we, we also uh, talk about some of the commonly used corpora and some common questions that people have about building corpora. Once you determine that you do in fact want to build a corpus, then you can go to step three. So step two is this overview video. You need to think about the data collection process. If your corpus will be built from publicly available texts, then you don't want need to worry about IRB considerations, but if you want to collect your own texts, 
there are a number of things you want to think about before you start collecting your data to ensure um, you can use that data to build a corpus. So we go through some of the ethical considerations in corpus building in this part of the wiki. Then if you are going to be using data that you're collecting yourself, um, you need to think about checking the consents that you've gotten um, and definitely think about how you're gonna collect that data. So we walk you through some of those considerations. After you've collected your data, this is going to be one of the most time consuming parts of the process, which is organizing your data. Um, so we give you an example of how we've organized our data for our, our corpus. Um, and of course, your research questions and how you plan to use and access the corpus will impact the decisions about how to organize your data. Uh, so again, this part of the corpus process often takes a great deal of time, uh, particularly if you've collected your data more as uh, a data dump or in, in an unstructured form. So once you have your data organized, um, the next three steps can go very quickly depending on uh, whether or not you can convert your data automatically. Um, so we talk about the three steps of um, converting, encoding, and standardizing your data. And um, we have developed a tool um, that allows you to um, do this automatically, and that's our Corpus Text Processor here. Uh, however, some of the data that you collect may not be able to um, be converted uh, automatically. So that's where this manually converting your data comes in. And we've developed some principles for converting data in formats such as websites, PowerPoints, and other formats that don't easily convert to plain text. Um, once you have done that manual conversion to uh, plain text formatting, you can go back and use the Corpus Text Processor for the other two steps. Um, so only part of this has to be manual. And these processes in general um, just ensure that you can use your corpus with different computational tools. And we explain more about these um, uh, processes within um, the section on um, converting your data here. OK, after your data have been standardized, uh, you're ready to go if you don't envision sharing your data or you don't want to link your text with metadata, such as students, test scores, L1 backgrounds, or countries of origin. However, you may want to link your data uh, text to metadata if you are building your corpus for research purposes. Um, and it's important to identify which group of authors produced a sample of text, for example, the, the author demographics. So um, linking text with metadata does require more advanced programming skills, but we provide scripts here. So you can see running the metadata processing script. Um, we provide scripts to help with this process. Um, so if you're able to manipulate a Python script or have someone uh, that is able to manipulate a Python script, you should be able to use them as a starting point for adding metadata to your texts. Um, and they get added in both the file names and the headers. Uh, this usually involves two, two steps. The first is preparing the metadata. Uh, so that's why we have this step here, gathering and preparing metadata. Um, and the, the second um, is adding the headers and file names and creating new file names based on that metadata, which is step eight. And so here we walk you through um, both the why you might want to add headers and file names um, and also the how, again, providing you with the script that will get you started, um, but you probably will need to manipulate it based on your own data. So the final step before sharing your data, if that is one of your goals, is to de-identify it so that your participants' identities are not revealed and are not linked with the text. We provide two possibilities for facilitating this process. So um, 
If you are not comfortable running scripts or manipulating scripts, then you can choose this manual de-identification tool that we've developed. Uh, this is a web-based app that essentially highlights all possible identifying information and allows you to redact the data while leaving replacement text indicating what has been redact redacted. So for example, the tool will highlight all words that are potential names um, and then you can choose the tag here, the name uh, from the menu. And we walk you through how to use the tool as well in this um, video demonstration. Another way to do this is to um, use our automatic de-identification script. Um, and this allows you to speed up this process, obviously. But you may still need to use the manual de-identification tool uh, because um, the script um, can only recognize based on uh, certain characteristics. And um, you'll want to double check to make sure uh, that the script has um, caught all of the identifying information or uh, has caught in identifying information to the point where you feel comfortable sharing the data. So that is Chibata in a nutshell. Um, and thanks for watching. We hope that this wiki um, will provide you with the basics for building your own corpus.